Hello and welcome back to the Consist of the Cog YouTube channel. I'm your host for this video, Reverend Jake Zabel, the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church located in Dolby, Queensland, Australia. Today, we're going to answer the question as to what is a deacon? Now, I wrote a book a um, while back titled, Should We Have Lay Distributors? And in that, I have this little section, uh, just a little excursus that kind of goes off on a tangent um, about what are deacons and I mean if you really want to read um, my thorough examination on deacons I would recommend getting a copy of my book or I believe I have a digital copy of this on the Coalc website just go to www.coalc.org go to the resources tab and click on theological papers by Reverend Jake Zabel and I believe I have a digital copy of my paper there and you'll be able to read in detail my explanation and discussion on deacons. However, for the sake of time and simplicity and brevity, I'm just going to look at kind of what was the Lutheran teaching regarding the office of deacon. Because there's, there's a lot of discussions on the topic of deacon throughout church history, and so I'm just going to really focus on what Luther and the early Lutherans taught concerning the office of deacon. The first thing I just want to point out is that the the office of deacon appears basically three different passages in the Bible. Uh, Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, where Paul introduces, uh, he writes his letter to the the bishops and deacons of Philippi. And there's also 1 Timothy 3, where you get the distinct offices of bishop and deacon. And there's also the account in Acts 6, where you get the appointing of the seven deacons, although they're not actually ever called deacons in that text. Uh, that's just a later they are um, ascribed as being deacons. They never explicitly called deacons in Acts 6. Now, like I said, there's some disagreement, particularly in like the Catholic Church, about whether deacons are pastors or not. Generally, deacons are either assistant pastors or they're lay assistants. And what is quite interesting is the, Luther the Lutheran approach to this because as we find out Luther will actually say the term deacon applies to both and I will get to that as we get further on into this discussion but first I wanted to talk about what is Luther's opinion on the office of deacon. See the Catholics argue that deacons are only referred to as assistant ministers. Now this becomes problematic though when you talk about deaconesses, the female version of of deacons because we don't have women's ordination so deaconesses are not ordained, they are not considered clergy but in Catholicism deacons are clergy unless it's a deaconess then it's a lay person. Uh, within Lutheranism as we'll discuss you can have both. Uh, but let's start with what Luther says. There are particularly four passages in Luther's writings that I focus on here. The first is comes from a discussion Luther had on the office of the ministry where he writes that the priesthood, that's the office of pastor, is properly nothing but the ministry of the word. The word I say, not the law, but the gospel. The diaconate is the ministry not of reading the gospel or the epistle as it is at present practice, but of distributing the church aid to the poor, so the priests may be relieved of the burden of temporal matters and may give themselves more freely to the prayer and the word. Luther then says that this was the original purpose of the institution of the diaconate as we read in Acts 5. Uh, it's actually Acts 6, but Luther made a mistake here. Um, here you can see from Luther that the deacons were, he says, that they work in the ministry, although by ministry there he doesn't mean clergy, he means like they serve in the church, but they don't read the epistle or the gospel, they're not teachers. Another place Luther discusses this topic is how he talks about how the apostles and ministers were to care for the church with preaching and praying, but that the care for the body was left to be distributed by other men. The next passage I have is where Luther says that the deacons were appointed to an inferior office to the office of the ministry. However, the fourth and final and most important passage I want to talk about here from Luther is where Luther is discussing whether laity are allowed to preach. And I went through this uh, passage in great detail in my video on lay reading. But here Luther says that 
laity are allowed to preach outside of the congregation, where there is no congregation. He says, when we consider preaching, we must consider it in two contexts, whether it is outside of the church to non-Christians, or whether it is inside the church in the local congregation. Luther says, outside of the congregation, anyone, even a lay person, can preach, whereas inside the congregation, only pastors are to preach. Only those who are called and ordained are to preach. In that case, a lay person is never allowed to preach. And so, on this, Luther says, thus Stephen preached publicly to non-Christians, as we are told in Acts 7, verses 1 through to 30, uh, 53. Although the apostles had not entrusted him with the office of preaching, yet he preached and performed great miracles among the people. Also, St. Philip, the deacon, Stephen's partner, though also to him the ministry had not been entrusted. This is the most important part because we know that in Acts 6, Stephen and Philip had been ordained as deacons. They'd been called and appointed as deacons. Yet Luther says here they had not received the office of preaching. And that's so he says specifically about uh, Stephen, he had not received the office of preaching. But then as Luther says regarding uh, Philip, he had not, he was not part of the ministry. So even though, as I said in a previous passage, Luther used the word ministry when he talked about uh, the diaconate as a ministry, there he didn't mean clergy. Here, Luther is using the term ministry here to refer to clergy. Now, Luther is not the only person that takes this position. If we look at Martin Chemnitz in his examination of the Council of Trent, he writes thus concerning the diaconate. The apostles afterwards accepted into the ministry of teaching those from among the deacons who were approved. So here we see the deacons were originally not considered part of the ministry of teaching. Later, they were accepted into the ministry. And this we see in the Bible that St. Philip the deacon later becomes St. Philip the evangelist which in the book of Ephesians is mentioned as one of the fourfold office of the ministry. So Philip goes from being a deacon, not a pastor, not a clergy, to being ordained as an evangelist, in which he does become a member of the clergy. So we see here that in the, the Lutherans believed that the original office of deacon, as we find in the books of Acts and Philippians and Timothy, is not a reference to the office of the ministry, but is the office of laity, and their job is not to preach or teach or administer the sacraments, because they're not clergy. And as we testify, and as we confess in Article 14 of the Augsburg Confession, nobody should publicly preach, teach, or administer the sacraments without being rightly called. Therefore, deacons, as like Stephen and Philip were, they were not pastors, they were not clergy, and they were not permitted to preach, teach, or administer sacraments. They were instructed to take care of the physical needs of the church, such as almsgiving, taking care of the poor, charity, stuff like that. That is the reason we had these lay offices. And originally, Luther and them held that deacons were members of, they were laity, they were, they were lay office. We see this also if you turn to uh, Johann Bugenhagen's annotations on the Ten Epistles of Paul, uh, which is his, this is his biblical commentary on that. And in, uh, in Philippians, when he talks about this idea of the bishops and the deacons, he says that the bishops are the ministers of the Word of God and the stewards of the mysteries of God. He says, moreover, the deacons are servants of the saints whom the church has chosen for this duty, namely the dispensing of goods of the church to the poor whom they serve as the need arises. Likewise, Bugenhagen says in his commentary on, on 1 Timothy chapter 3 here regarding deacons, he says that deacons were the ministers of the saints and providers of the poor. So, this was the position of Luther, his companion Bugenhagen, and his companion Martin Chemnitz, that deacons were, in the original sense of that word, meant to be a lay office. However, 
that was not the opinions of later Lutherans like Johann Gerhard. Johann Gerhard, in his commentary on First and Second Timothy, he makes the point when he discusses the deacons in in First Timothy three that the deacons were members of the clergy. So you had Luther and Chemnitz and Bergenhagen, these early Lutherans, saying that that the office of deacon mentioned in scripture was a lay office, particularly when you talk about the seven deacons in Acts, the deacons in Philippians, and the deacons in Timothy. Whereas when you get into like this third and fourth generation of Lutherans with Gerhard, they start saying, no, 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 they're clergy. And the confusion around this actually stems from the word deacon itself. The word deacon literally just means minister, servant, serving one. Uh, so the word deacon doesn't necessarily mean either laity or clergy. And in fact, Luther will use the term deacon in both sense of the word. See, Luther will use the word deacon when he means laity, as we see in these previous texts that I've just read, where Luther believed that the seven deacons of Acts 6 were laity. So in other places, Luther will be referring to the office of the ministry and he'll use the word deacon. Uh, of a particular, two particular examples from church history would show uh, in 1525, Luther ordained a deacon by the name of Georg Roa or George Roa to serve at the Church of Wittenberg. He was referred to Deacon Roa, yet he was established as an assisting pastor. In fact, during his ordination, it was stated that he was of equal rights to the other clergy of Wittenberg. Therefore, George, who was considered a deacon, was considered a member of the clergy and of equal right, although by human right he was an assisting pastor, he did by divine right possess the full office of the ministry. Likewise, in 1546, Luther wrote to his colleague Nicholas von Armsdorff concerning his deacon, Adam Besser, Besser uh, who had been assisting with the administration of the Lord's Supper. And we know from the Book of Concord that no one was to administer the Lord's Supper unless they were a member of the clergy. So Luther used this term interchangeably. Uh, in the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, Melanchthon writes that the church has the command to appoint ministers. Now, the English here comes from the Latin ministeris. However, in the original German, Melanchthon actually uses two words, uh, predator, uh, prediger and diakonos, preacher and deacon. So the fact that Melanchthon combines these two words in the German, preacher and deacon, into a single word in the Latin, minister, shows that here Melanchthon is using the word deacon as a member of the clergy. Uh, Luther himself in other places will say stuff like, the clergy, he refers to them as ministers, deacons, bishops, stewards. And so, for Luther, the term deacon simply means minister. And you can have a clerical minister who serves in the office of the ministry, or you can have a lay minister who does not serve through word and sacrament, but takes care of the physical means of the church. And this then leads us also into the topic of elders. So, in 1 Timothy 5, 17, St. Paul talks about having respect for elders, especially those who teach. Therefore, here, Paul establishes two types of elders, those who teach and those who don't teach. Uh, Johann Gerhard commented on this, saying that in the apostolic and original church, there were two types of presbyters, which are called signors in the Latin as is concluded from 1 Timothy 5.17. For some administered the teaching office, or as the apostles speak there, worked in word and doctrine, who were called, who were called bishops, pastors, etc. But others were set up for censoring morals and preserving church discipline. But both bore in common the name elder. Martin Kemnitz also discusses this in his examination on the Council of Trent, saying it calls lay presbyters elders and official office. 
this is the constant doctrine of the teachers of the church. Uh, Chemnitz will also mention this in his Enchiridion where he says, with the name elders are meant not only ministers of the word, but included the presbytery are also those who are appointed by the whole church to minister the work of the church as Tertullian and Ambrose testify. So here you have Chemnitz saying that there are two types of elders in the church. There are the lay elders who take care of the work of the church, this is the physical side of the church, and then there are the clerical elders, those who take care of word and sacrament. And Chemnitz himself says that this is testified to by the church fathers Tertullian and St. Ambrose of Milan. So what we can gather from all of this is that the word deacon can be used in two different ways. And it has been throughout church history. It has been used as both um, a clerical deacon and also a lay deacon. And so there we need to be able to, when we talk about deacons, we need to make sure who we are talking about, whether we're talking about um, a clerical deacon or a, a lay deacon. Because there are the deacons who preach and teach and there are the deacons who don't preach and teach. And Martin Luther himself and the other reformers with him did use the term deacon interchangeably. When discussing St. Stephen and St. Philip, Luther used the term deacon in reference to them being lay ministers. Yet when Luther ordained George Rower as deacon at Wittenberg, he was ordaining him as an assistant pastor. So the term deacon is essentially synonymous with the word assistant. Now you can either be an assistant pastor or a lay assistant. So then this raises to what are the roles and duty of a deacon? Well, it depends who you're talking about. If you're talking about an assistant pastor, then they may administer through word and sacrament. If you're talking about an, a lay assistant, then they are not to administer word and sacrament, but only take care of the physical side to the church. And I might discuss this further in my next video, where I'll discuss at detail what are the roles of a lay deacon. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye and God bless.